So Project Sonar is an internet-wide scanning project where we scan the entire internet. This is done on a continual basis. This is done for a number of reasons. One, we need visibility into what's on the internet. Organizations and individuals are co-opting technology into their lives, don't really understand what it is, what it does, or what it's exposing them to. So as an extension of vulnerability research, over the last 20 years, we've been doing vulnerability research on things that find our interest, pique our interest, things that uh, fuel our curiosity, projects that we've been taking on under scopes of work to do the research, or um, you know, we find in our idle time. While interesting and a lot of fun, it's not efficient. So Project Sonar has allowed us to get a large view across the internet of all kinds of things, all kinds of applications, all kinds of software, all kinds of hardware devices, things that are running, but what we're finding is, as we look at all these things, a lot of software, a lot of hardware, things that we can't identify, fingerprints that are missing. Um, so there's an opportunity to work as a researcher in the community to pull down this data, to process this data, and to build fingerprints for this. So RECOG, a part of Project Sonar, the RECOG uh, process is designed a lot like an in-map signature in that it's designed to identify and fingerprint specific uh, instances, services, programs that are running. We're capturing all kinds of data with this scan and we're seeing all kinds of trends, new technology coming online. We have no idea what it is, who makes it, what kind of vulnerabilities or services it's actually providing to its end user or its intended audience. But what we can be confident of is this industry probably hasn't taken a hard look at it. Uh, this provides an opportunity for the research community, one, to build these fingerprints, two, to help us better quantify exactly what these things are, how many instances there are, and then when you start talking about vulnerability research, now you know, rather than, wow, I found this thing, how big of a deal is it? You can turn around and say, this, this is trending, this is huge, this is all over the internet. I wonder if it's vulnerable, and you identify that vulnerability. Not only are you, you know, getting the opportunity to contact ZDNet or, um, you know, gain visibility for your research, but you're also getting the opportunity to kill a major classification of vulnerability across the internet and make the internet safer. The point that we live in today is the industry and the technology we use every day is only as safe as our neighbors. We're bringing all kinds of technology into our companies, into our homes, and we don't really know what that is from a vulnerability standpoint. The other part of this is we don't really know what the future of research looks like from a legality standpoint. Whether you live in Europe or the United States, right now, today, this is February 2015, we're looking at a very uncertain future. Um, law, the legislators, they're very interested in trying to identify ways to deal with criminal hacking. Um, if you find a vulnerability today, you're going to notify someone outside your country, a manufacturer, a vendor that makes something. You don't know whether it's legal or safe to make that contact. At the end of the day, as researchers, we're working to make the internet a safer place. But the law doesn't differentiate that. So as we talk about cyber threat indicators, as we start seeing information sharing legislation here in the United States, Europe, wherever you may live, when those conversations start, we have the option, we have the opportunity, and it's happening right now, to get involved, to provide an informed voice, to help inform the process, inform the conversation. We can earn a seat at the table, earn the trust, and work together to make the internet a safer place.